we had a tragic, tragic tragedy. Our eldest son got ill when he was three and a half years of age, and he died when he was 11 and a half. So for eight years, we had a terrible time. He died of cancer, leuke leukemia. Perhaps today he might have been alive, but those days there was no help for it. During the war, we went to great trouble to get him uh, types, special types of injections things, from America. And we had a hell of a time. Mess had a hell of a time. So to a certain extent, I, did, I didn't, I neglected perhaps Irma, and I don't think so. Irma says, uh, Sidney says always to about me and Irma, uh, open my love, tell me what Sidney did to you. This, this is the favorite story I've got. Uh, Irma was a very sweet little girl, very pretty, and she was a little, she was a, uh, uh, she, uh, she was Captain Hook. And another also child's play. I was ready to listen to her, and I heard 76 children say, sing, say the same recitation. You know, no. and I'll never forget what a lovely little thing she was. A very loving child. And we were quite a happy family. We lived that. Then I, I was in partnership with this man, Herbert Berman, for six years. In those six years, I, I did only civil law. I didn't do criminal law. He did everything. But when I went out to North End in 1934, I started doing criminal law. And I specialized in criminal law for 30 years. Although I did all civil work also. I've always been a very good lawyer. I've always been inter very interested in law. I've, I've read every journal. I've, had, I've got a beautiful, very extensive law library, which I gave to my son. I defended a man called Bosch for murder. This man was a man with a family, a man of about late thirties, and he fell in love with a girl of about 17, 16, 17, Francatelli, a nursemaid of one of our friends, the Bernsteins. She was a nursemaid there, but she was a big girl for her age. And he left his wife, children and, and lived with her. At a certain stage, she left him. He wouldn't even do with him. And he wouldn't leave her alone. So one day he came up to her and she was with, with a little child in a pram. She was nursing a child. He asked her to come back to him. She wouldn't. He went back to his home, he got a gun, came back and shot her, killed her. He was he was prosecuted for murder. Our defense was temporary insanity. Now today he would have got over that without any trouble. We had a psychiatrist as a as a witness for us to say oh, what had happened. He was nuts about it, he was mad. She drove him mad, you see. But he left her, went to his home about a mile away, got a gun and came back. The judge said he sentenced him to death that he had time to reflect when he was on the way home and back. He had time for good off, and he sent him to death. We appealed without success. We approached, we made petition to the government. We had a lot of signatures to avoid the death sentence, to get it commuted. Nothing happened, and he was hanged, a white man, hanged. In those days, to hang a white man was quite a big thing, and very unusual. Uh, I had some amusing experiences. I defended a, a, a black man for theft. Theft of linen. Linen, covers, cloth, you know, linen. And the, the complainant was a man called Berman, a very great friend of, of, my, of mine and my family. Mr. Berman must have been a man of about 60 when he went when I, I was a young man of 34, 30, 30, perhaps 40. He went to the witness box and he said, this man stole my linen. I said to Mr. Berman, how can you tell this man stole your linen? This is Horrocks linen, you can buy it anywhere. Have you got the identification mark? He said, no, but it's my linen, I know it's mine. I said, Mr. Berman, please, you must, you do admit that you can buy Horrocks anyway, yes. It turns out to me, yes, he says, my, Jacob, dream me a cop, don't 
tried to mislead me. You follow? It's my linen. I got it off. But when I, the linen was given back to my to my band, to client, I took the linen away from him. I sent it back to Mervyn. I did the same thing. Uh, I defended a man for thieving, stealing skins, hides. I didn't see these boys. I was too busy. I, I used to have as much as 10 cases a day sometimes. I had a very busy practice, enormous practice. So I'd have people to take statements from, the, from, my, from my people. So in one case, I was defending a boy, for, a man, for stealing hides. I come to court, and who's the complainant? My Max and my brother's uh, manager. So they stole from my brother. So I, I got him off because they, you could get hides anywhere they want in the identification mark. You follow? So I got him off. I sent the hides back to Max. I did the same thing with a man called Porter. They stole, they stole uh, perfume from Porter in his shop. I was defending it, I got him off. I sent the perfume back. You follow? I wouldn't let them. So I had some types of experiences. I've defended every type of case, from murder to bestiality. Oh, yes. I once defended a man of 70, over 70, who was alleged to have misbehaved himself with a goat. And we called his wife to say that the semen that was found in his trousers was due to his association with her, not the goat. And I got him off. But his wife was satisfied that he was guilty. I've had, all, I've had terrible, the worst type of dirty case I've had. But it never affected me. I've always been a bit of a prude in my heart. It's funny, isn't it? 